Hey guys, what's going on? Guns blazing once again. Let's hop right into these farming decks. So first up, we got Cyber Angels. Uh, one of the easier ones to to run to farm Esperoba. Pretty simple. Pretty consistent as well. You don't have to run balance. You can run restart, but I'm trying to get skills on uh, Yami Bakura. That's why I'm running it on him, and he doesn't have restart. Anyways, basically, you just get your Dakinis out. Try to get them pumped up with Edaton so that he can't attack over them with uh, Gravity Blaster plus Jinzo. And uh, your Dakinis will be protected from Brain Control or whatever that card is called because uh, they can't be normal summoned. So they can't be stolen by it. And they'll be protected from Tribute to the Doomed because of Machine Angel Ritual in the Grave. And once you get two Dakinis out on the field, uh, Tribute to the Doomed is not really going to matter. If you don't have Sonic or Senju, you can replace them easily with Skalengle. That's a cheap alternative. It's also a fairy type level 2, so it could easily be used for Absolute Ritual. If you don't have two Union Attacks, just go with Piranha Army and then two Gift of the Martyrs. Also cheap alternatives. Everything else is farmable or uh, not really a rare card. So, Now this deck is actually quite easily accessible. Except for maybe, I don't know, the second Cyber Petite. And maybe the Absolute Rituals if you have trouble farming a, a Lexus. But we do have some more decks coming up. If you can't get your hands on this one. Right here, I do return my Machine Angel Ritual because I already have two Dakinis. And uh, the annoying thing about this deck is that it keeps asking you to pop Dakinis effect. And that's, that adds a lot of time to the farm, as well as uh, Benton and Edaton. That's really the only annoying thing about this deck, is that those things take up uh, seconds of time and it piles up. So this is, a, this is one thing that you'll be able to avoid once you've pumped up your Dakinis with Edaton. The Jinzo plus Gravity Blaster. It's all good. Just popping those Dakinis. Popping. Finally get my Edaton boost, so I can no longer do that Jinzo Gravity Blaster nonsense, but I think he only runs one Gravity Blaster, so it doesn't really matter at this point. Tribute to the Dune pops, but that doesn't really matter because we recycle the Dakinis anyway. Don't attack into any of his monsters because Dakinis do have Piercing Damage and so you'll forfeit your uh, Victory by Effect Damage only bonus. If you're using Piranha uh, with uh, Gift of the Martyrs then this one doesn't really matter to you. It doesn't really apply but if you're using Vassal plus two Union Attacks definitely don't attack into the monsters with your Dakinis. Just wait until the final turn to uh, attack them. Then the final turn, the usual secret pass onto the Vassal. Double Union. Keep the anti magic arrows in your hand until the battle phase. And then once you pop into the battle phase, anti magic arrows will be available for use, and you gotta use it, or else he has a trap that switches your monsters into defense mode. Easy 8000 there with the ritual summons. Next up we got Lab Builder, shout out to More Maniac from the Duel Links subreddit. This is where I got it from, made a few changes. Basically you get a Labyrinth wall out. You actually don't need the Labyrinth Builder skill. As long as you manage to get two of your monsters out early, two of your level 5 monsters out. I mean level 5 and 6, uh, Aqua Madur is level 6. But Labyrinth Builder does definitely make it a lot more consistent. The D spell is for his Gravity Blaster so he doesn't pump up too hard on you. Soul Resurrection is in case he tribute to the Dooms on you and you don't have access to your other monsters yet. Uh, once you have two defense monsters out on the field, uh, tribute to the Doom isn't going to matter. So that's what I'm doing here. The deck list has a pot of benevolence in it, which this replay does not have because uh, I forgot to put it in the deck while I was dueling this time. But yeah, definitely add a pot of benevolence in there or else he can potentially deck out before you draw your final combo. 
Also, another thing I forgot to do in this duel was to tribute one of my Labyrinth Walls for a Neo Aquamador. Like, I could have done it right here, and that would have get, gotten me tribute summon points. Again, you can replace Vassal and two Union attacks with uh, Piranha Army, and two Gift of the Martyrs actually doesn't make a single difference in this deck because they always attack your face down, uh, face down monsters, and so they'll take damage from it, and you don't get a vic uh, victory effect damage bonus from uh, Gravekeeper's Vassal anyways. The cool thing about this deck is that since he gets his Jinzos out, he can't even activate the trap uh, that stops your final attack from happening, so you don't have to run anti-magic arrows in this deck. It's very unlikely that he's not going to summon Jinzo, but it did happen to one dude, and it's not very likely, so you don't have to really worry about that. As you can see though, uh, as I said, since I don't have Pot of Benevolence in this uh, in this version that I'm using in this replay, he's going to deck out before I do. But thankfully, I pick up the right card, and I'm still able to uh, finish up the farm, even though I won't get that uh, Cards on the Brink bonus. You can Shield and Sword after or before you summon your Vassal, it doesn't really matter. You'll still have uh, over 10,000 damage. Pop those unions, no anti-magic arrows needed. As I said, Jinzo locks down his traps too, so there you go. This one's only about 7,000 points though, unless you have like a lot of prismatics, and I'm talking a lot. Alright, last one. I'm only showing three decks. There's more out there because Esperoba is not that difficult to farm, but this is Kaiba Man Blue Eyes, and uh, I'm running Destiny Draw. You don't have to. But it is a good option because you get to pick up either your Kaiba Man or your Blue Eyes or whatever you need to uh, secure the board. I'm, I'm quite fortunate to get Blue Eyes out on turn 1 here. It's not always going to happen. And therefore other skills that you can run are Restart, Dual Standby to increase the consistency of uh, that happening. As you can see, there's a lot of optional cards here, such as the Shard of Greeds and the Legacy of Yadagorasus. You don't need that many. Like, you don't need two Shard of Greeds. If you want, you can replace those with, like, Crystal Seers. That also increases the consistency. While also, uh, what's it called? Drawing you cards so that he doesn't deck out before you. Champion's Vig and Spell Shield Type 8 are in case he tries to t uh, target our Blue Eyes with his spells. And Birthright is there in case uh, one of our Blue Eyes dies to Tribute to the Doomed. Sphere of Bola is also not really necessary in this deck. Just run another enemy controller. Or, you know, another draw card. It's actually quite flexible. I have a lot of Prismas in this deck, and that's why I easily get uh, 8,000 with it. You do need around, I think, 700 points from Glossies and Prismatics if you want to reach 8,000 with this deck. And here's the final turn. It's just the usual Gravekeeper's Vassal, double Union attack. And you pop the anti-magic arrows at the start of the battle phase so that he doesn't, uh, he can't pop his traps. Alright guys, hope you, uh, hope you get some good drops on Esperoba. I'll be back later today with another video hitting you with that double upload. You guys, have yourselves a good day. This is Guns Blazing, signing out.